We've all been there. After a long day at work, you sit down and binge read some Arthurian romances. They're called illuminated manuscripts because they're illuminated with illustrations in the borders, colorful drawings, and very special doodles in the margins. But among all those steroidal rabbits and this hooded person laying literal eggs, there's actually a theme. A lot of medieval knights in these manuscripts are fighting snails. Why is this happening? The largest snail alive is 15.5 inches, snout to tail. So why does this knight look like he's in for the fight of his life? Illuminated manuscripts were handwritten. Scribes painstakingly transcribed the same Bibles, devotionals, and stories. They also decorated the margins. By the 1960s, one scholar thought these margins were worth attention. Lillian Randall was particularly intrigued by the snail in Gothic marginal warfare. She developed a theory about why a book like this might include a winged knight fleeing snails, and why it showed up again and again and again. Randall found more than 70 snail fighting heroes in just 29 manuscripts, most of which were made between 1290 and 1310. Pray for yourself, knight. Pray that the snail will kill you quickly. Sometimes the margins riffed on the text, sometimes they were disconnected, but Randall connected them to historical stereotypes. The biggest was that the Lombards were greedy, mean, and cowardly. The Lombards were a Germanic people that had invaded Italy. They were warriors. But in 772, they were badly beaten by Charlemagne. That permanently stained their reputation. By the late 1200s, when those snail pictures started getting popular, the Lombards had become lenders and pawnbrokers spread throughout Europe. They didn't have full rights, they couldn't even own arms, but they did have power. That combination of power and impotence, Randall argued, made them targets. Snail was the appropriate insult. Snails carried their houses on their backs as they retreated, just as the Lombards had from Charlemagne. They were slimy, like a lot of Europeans probably saw their lenders. Calling Lombards snails was an anti-foreign slur that later grew into a bigger trope. It appeared in what was probably a medieval pattern book, with models that helped other scribes draw. And snails showed up in many different combinations later on. Here's a snail monkey rabbit battle royale from the 1400s. Snails were slow, but they spread. We can't be certain what the knights and snails meant because they meant different things as the image became a cliche. The same way people don't explain their memes today, scribes didn't annotate their games in the margins. Randall's argument fits with the timing and history, but people also speculate that snails represented the slowness of time or the insulation of the ruling class. We can only be certain about one thing. The snails reveal something along with everything else in the margins. As scribes labored over transcriptions of hallowed works, reproducing every line, they snuck in additions, jokes, and riffs in the margins of the text. The drawings were fantasies, but they were made by artists who sought to parody the indignities and absurdities of their own world. The margins were the only space left. So they turned them into a self-portrait. Except for this guy. He's just going to get murdered by a snail. 